name is Shorty, and I'm from Texas. I think that's enough of that, dude. Yeah? Yeah. But you do get a place of honor in this video, my dear friend. Even with your army hat being a little weird there. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm back. I've been trying to get this video out for a bit, but things kept happening. I had a second mental hospital stay. Then I had a real uh, hospital stay for observation because I had four seizures in one night right there in Walmart. And, uh, of course, I urinated my pants in front of everyone. It was, it was such a joy, joyful experience to have. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I'm back, and I, I, I re what I really want to focus on this time is to talk about how, because I was doing good, man, I was taking my medicines, I was working out once every single day a week, um, then I'd take one day off, I was doing walking, I was doing weightlifting, I was writing, I was reading, I was listening to music, I was getting better, I was getting control, and then the bubble and I spiraled. No reason. There was no trigger. There was no horrible thing that happened to make it happen. I just lost. And it still upsets me. Because <laughs> you start to wonder yourself, what's the fucking point? If even when you do everything right, things can and will still go wrong. So I was sitting here watching videos and this guy jumped on my back and decided to make it his hangout place. But that what I, what I eventually saw to myself, and it wasn't because of the facility, it wasn't because of anything, but myself realizing that that doesn't mean I have to quit, right? So, okay, maybe in a video game sense, I got to save as I go because every now and again, I'm going to lose my progress, but it doesn't mean I'm going to start back at the very beginning. It, 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 it can mean that I, 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 I can start closer to the level that I was at before I fell. And yeah, this one was just really hard. And I, 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 I even did things right when things went wrong. Instead of like doing some really horrible stuff to myself and then someone calling for help for me, I, of my own volition, took myself to the uh, mental health um, help that I have in my small town. And instead of having been stuck in a hospital, I just sat there all day under supervision where I could go outside and stand in the breeze and such until the cops came. See, and then up, and up until the cops came, it was the best experience I've had so far when it comes to asking for help. But as soon as the cops got there, oppo as opposed to every other cop ride I've had where they've been nice, they've been talkative, they didn't handcuff me. If they did, they did it in the front very loosely. They were kind and patient and understanding this duo and I'm pretty sure it's because one of them was a rookie and the other one wanted to do things by letter. They treated me like a piece of shit that was dangerous. I knew it was going to be different when they approached me. They came flanking on both sides with their hands on their weapons, the tasers. And I was it's like, dude, guys, I've been sitting here for six hours willingly all day long. What makes you think I'm going to fight you now? But they had me immediately stand up against the wall, search me, and then handcuff me. And keep in mind, this is around the 18th of February. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's still handcuff scars on me from sitting in, the, from being handcuffed behind my back for two hours on the drive to Austin, which is where the place I went to go was. And I mean, I asked him if I could have a smoke before we left because the facility won't let you. And at first, the guy said yes, but then literally like two minutes into it, he said, all right, we got to go. And I asked him, I was like, oh, your shift is ending. You guys want to go home, right? And they're like, no, no, it's just starting. We just have a long drive. So I was like, okay, so you can't spare me four minutes. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. 
and the whole drive there they were suspicious of me like they kept turning the light on and asking did you get out of your seatbelt i'm like no i'm trying to get comfortable here because i was handcuffed really tight and so i i try and turn myself here i try and turn myself there just to get comfortable but i couldn't and yeah we finally got there and i've been to this place five times before they know me in fact i ended up with the same therapist who uh recalled my last day and because she, she called me sir and i was like don't you remember me and she's like oh no 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 daniel i remember you you're the instigator i was like what do you mean instigator and she told me before your last visit everyone was in a good place but after about three days of you arriving everyone was requesting their four-hour AMA letters everyone was complaining about smoking everyone was refusing to eat unless they were given something and it was like you started you almost started a riot and I said no all I did was inform them of their rights you guys tried to keep them locked up inside. I informed them that they were allowed to go outside. So yeah, every day they requested to go outside. You guys didn't inform them of their rights to go from non-voluntary to voluntary. And I explained that to them and I also explained the four hour AMA letter. You guys didn't do that. So yeah, maybe, well, basically she said, you are a leader, but in the wrong direction. And you know what? Fair enough, because I caught myself wrangling in people this time to break stupid rules with me because when you're in there you need to gain a sense of getting one over on the man sometimes like i i mean i participated in group i did my therapy i took my medications but at the same time i wasn't gonna let them get me down so you know i i did a hunger strike until i got a one-on-one -on -one with my psychiatrist and other people joined me and I may have found a way to bring contraband in there. Nothing illegal, just contraband. And I may have facilitated a way for everyone to partake. And mm, I wasn't supposed to have that myself, much less invite everyone to partake in it and then find a secretive language and code to make it to where we could have that to happen. But this place also allowed me to have seizures and then just watched. Like I had a seizure during dinner and a nurse had just gotten off of duty at 7.30. I don't, I, I, I did not see this, but I was told about it. People were yelling for someone to help and she just stood there and watched me. And when one of the, when one of the um, techs asked her to assist, she said, nope, I'm off the clock now. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? You're off the clock, so fuck this guy, right? It's that old saying, nobody likes a ginger, and gingers don't have souls. But, um, yeah, it was a, it was an okay visit this time. But it was also, I witnessed one of the most depressing things I've ever seen. There was this older, elderly Asian lady. I believe it was room 204. Usually everyone has a roommate. She didn't. And the reason was because she refused to get out of bed. And I mean, zero hour, zero hundred hours to zero hundred hours. She never got up from that bed. She laid there with her blanket up to her chin, scared, talking to the ceiling through a mask. She soiled herself multiple times and the workers would not clean her. And they used the excuse that well she won't don't she says no she won't let us and i brought up that that doesn't mean you don't help her she that, that's dangerous that could be harmful to her she has a right to dignity and a healthy healing situation and you guys leaving her in her filth like number two and number one on the floor and they were just taking the easy the easy way out and it was breaking my fucking heart because i wanted to do something to help this lady i, I couldn't 
but I imagined what she must have been like in her youth because she still was kind of beautiful in her elderly age and I just I imagine what what she, she would be like in, in a clear state of mind and I wrote a poem about it I'm gonna read it to you now if you're not interested in this poem you probably fast forward about 30 seconds and skip it all together but this poem is about what I imagined her last time, her last moments were like, her memories, her life. It's called Her. Time had stolen her youth and joy, but her beauty still remained. In her age, she wondered how her body still somehow sustained life, even with little of it is supposed to give you hope. But she laid there in bed day by day, thinking only of the rope. She dreamed of, their hub of her husband's first kiss, his hands upon her cheeks, her face relaxing into a smile, but her fading sparkle now meek. Her breathing labored and slow, she races to remember his love by turning to pages of memories past and ignoring the light above. Just one more memory she pleads to fill his touch in mine, so God thus granted the wish to make her passing kind. She smiles in delight and joy, there stands the great love of her life. He opens his arms, emitting a glow, and with her he then takes flight. And so she died alone in this place where they strap you to beds and chairs. A lonely, horrible, barren place that showed her no love or care. I wrote that for her. I don't know what happened to her. She was still there when I left. But she deserved better. And all her lonely sisters out there, her elderly sisters in different mental health facilities, they deserve better. And we should do better because that is fucking unacceptable. The conditions that we were leaving her in. And I'm disgusted by it. Hold on. So yeah, I'm disgusted by it. And I've seen comments of people saying, oh, these things don't happen in mental health facilities. You know, they'd be closed down or this or that. And I'm telling you, these are not stories. These are things my eyeballs saw, my ears heard, and my heart broke from witnessing. Okay, this shit happens. This isn't a, a, a awesome system where everyone's nice all the time and everyone gets taken care of. People lay in their own shit for days on end, okay? Dry vomit gets left in the wall. These places are ill-equipped to handle the number of patients they have, but they can't hire more people. Some places are great. They're private. They get a lot of money for what they do. Some places are public. I, I mean, I'm scared to go to the public ones. I've, I've been to six different ones, including the VA. And I'm telling you now, if any place ever tries to send me to the VA crisis hospital, which is where you go when you're in a mental health crisis emergency, I will fight them tooth and nail. They will have to strap me to the bed again. And even then, they'll be lucky if they get me there. Because it's so horrible how they treat everyone. And these places, they need to do so much better. And we're doing nothing to make it better. And I just, I wanted to talk about her because she made a huge impression on my heart in my brain but back to the the subject at hand it was in that place and I was miserable I wasn't sleeping I I wasn't getting to work out anymore I I had just pretty much given up and then that evening seizure had happened and I I came to on the floor with like four people holding me down and someone holding me so tender my head in their lap because I'd been slamming my face on the ground with the uh, muscle spasms. And they were just stroking my hair and telling me it was gonna be okay. And I felt comforted. I felt that I mattered. And after that, my point of view kind of shifted. It's like, if I can matter to some strangers, I should fucking matter to myself. And that's when I started 
stepping back up again. I had fallen, I had spiraled, I had been broken. I, I was nothing, but I was born again to confront the evils that attempt to bury me every time I stand up tall. And it's just the truth I have to acknowledge. It's the truth I have to accept that no matter how well I do, my, my mind is always going to try and bury me. That's its goal. And I can choose how the story goes. It's my choice. So I'm going to be working a lot harder on reminding myself when I, when, when my, when I reach those, you know, climb, 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 drop offs, those cliff drops, cliff drop offs. I'm going to fucking give it my all because I deserve it. My family deserves it. Shorty fucking deserves it. And I don't want to disappoint myself. I don't want to disappoint y'all. So I'm going to keep trying and I'm going to keep trying to do better every chance I get. Uh, I also wanted to uh, kind of let everyone... Well, yeah, there was also that hospitalization repeat of myself from the fourth seizures. I'm letting on I got a, my neurology appointments on April 19th. So hopefully we can get some answers why they're, they're occurring so much more often now. And they've upped my, my anti-seizure medications a lot. So that should help. And, uh... Yeah, I'm back to working out, uh, sort of. Right now I can't because I also have COVID again. Uh, when I had the seizures, they also noticed my lungs weren't working great. So they tested me for COVID. And yes, I, I got it for a third fucking time. My O2 stats were just a little bit low. I think they're at 91, which isn't life-threatening or anything. But it's low enough to be like, hmm. So... Once that gets under control, I'll be able to start working out again. And I'm, I, I got a little phrase for myself. It's, it's just, it's, it's just hold on, trust yourself, and trust your plan. That means when I dip, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to trust myself and the plans that I've made while I was in a better place. If my plan says to do this on that day, I'm going to do it regardless of how pressed I am, regardless of the voices I'm hearing. I'm hearing them right now. Sometimes they don't stop, but I can't give them the time of day because if I do, it's such a slippery surface. So I'm doing everything I can to ignore them and just hold on and trust myself and trust my plan. And I think that could benefit anyone who went by that mantra if they struggle with similar things that I do. I also want to announce two good news things. First, the second poetry book is being published soon. In fact, this very weekend, we're going to finish the edits. Hopefully, it's like a three-day event. We're just going to hunker down and do it. And that means the second book with the original art from my my good friend, Mr. Harrison, uh, will be uh, prominent in uh, he's such a good artist. He he reads my poems and then he draws beautiful original art of the poem. And it's like someone visualizing what I tried to say from my heart and my mind on paper. Someone else takes those words and makes it a reality. It's it means the world to me. So Harrison, thank you, thank you, man. And the last thing is, y'all won't believe this, but since my last video. I've lost 30 pounds. Now, 20 pounds of that was working out and eating right. My strength has increased exponentially. I can now wear my shirts again. I'm wearing medium shirts now again, instead of having to wear large. My pants are continuously falling off. And um, yeah, 10 pounds of that might be illness though, because being in the hospital for so long and not eating and 
seizures and liquid diet it just so but about 20 pounds of that was fat loss and muscle gain so i'm really excited to see where else i can go with this and i'm letting y'all know that it really does help your mental energy your mental self-image when you participate in life with activities and just find something you enjoy like i'm one day i'll get my my, I used another heavy boxing bag so I can box again. And I used to box in the army. I was not not too fucking bad, actually. I uh, I placed in a base wide tournament in Arizona, uh, that was a fun story, I'll tell y'all about that at some point in the future, but it involved the song, Oh Danny Boy, so, yeah, people like to make fun of me, because <laughs> I'm ginger, anyhow, that's it for tonight, um, I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon, evening, day, whatever it happens to be, I'm going to end this video with another poem that I wrote that really tries to capture the thought process of what's the point of doing all this positive work if it's just going to keep going back down as soon as the depression hits with the hallucinations. And uh, I'm kind of proud of this one. I wrote it in about four or five minutes I just slopped it down and it has a really good flow so you can go or you can stick around and hear that and then maybe a little bit of harmonica playing also but until next time bye I hope you guys are awesome and I'll see you soon ain't that right partner yeah is right This one is called Voices in the Dark. I've got a thousand reasons to live, but I can't count to one. I'm fighting for motivation, but my heart is screaming, done. Don't open up, don't try to love, just stop giving your all. You know the pit is there for you, you know you'll fail and fall, and fall to the ruin of your fate and fruitless future, with lidless eyes staring through every single suture. Gaping mouths, buried lips, voices in the dark. All the whispers grab your mind. You know now you've been marked. Voices in the dark. Because I think a lot of us experience that. Ooh, it's out of focus. Too bad. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. For we're all in a mood for a melody. And you've got us feeling alright. From childhood's hour, I have not been, as others were, I have not seen, as others saw, I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source, I have not taken, my sorrow, I could not awaken, my heart to joy at the same tone, and all I loved, I loved alone.